Hello, lovely people. Yes, indeed, I've, uh, I've broken out the Christmas tree. It's not a fake background, it's, it's quite further back than I thought. Hang on. It's been a bit of a day, but we thought we'd sit down and have a little chat about Christmas. Is Christmas a time to be selfish or selfless? And when I say a bit of a day, I mean that someone did not want to do his third nap of the day. I'm not naming names. We know who that someone was. It wasn't Walter. He has eight naps a day. Someone decided to stay awake from 2.30 until 6.30. But anyway, the other day I was having a conversation with my therapist, because yes, I actually have a therapist now. I'm working my medical trauma. Go me! I realized I should probably actually do something about that. When I had to leave the room to avoid having a panic attack, the fourth time when Rupert was have, being held down by medical staff uh, to have like a routine injection and therefore need to be held down by medical staff. And if you have medical trauma, it, it really like, and I was like, this is not good. This is not great. Um, what if he actually has a problem? What if he breaks his arm? What on earth am I going to do because I can't fix that? We're related to a lot of doctors who I do trust because I'm related to them. However, none of them are specialists in the setting of a child's bone. So therefore should probably work on my issues. Also the panic attack thing. So you know, thank goodness for better help. The, uh, the new sponsor of my brain and this video. I say sponsor of my brain. They're not really sponsored by my brain because I still have to pay for my own therapy. They're just really helpful. More on that later. Back to my therapy session. Um, to practice what this video has turned into. Huh. Hi, I'm Jessica. Probably should have done introductions first. So, this is my channel and I was recently described as a variety warmth YouTuber, which, fine. Totally running with that one. Generally, they're on LGBTQ plus disability or chronic illness themes. Sometimes they have an intersect with parenting, often a historical slant, if you can tell by this image. I'm quite into history. It's that that you can see. Anyway, that's a packet of baby wipes. Just to ruin the illusion. Not everyone who wears vintage is actually into history. And not everyone who wears vintage enjoys being spoken to like a grandmother. That's also a thing that people should probably know. I do enjoy being spoken to like a grandmother. I get spoken to like a grandmother a lot. You'd be amazed. Probably relates more to preferring being seen as kind of unsex while them in public, especially by men, rather than, you know, literally being treated like a grandmother. Mull over that one in the comments. As I said, we're in a therapy session here, apparently. It is an interesting dichotomy though. On the one hand, I'm a lesbian, a group of people far too often seen as hypersexualized by society and the media. But on the other hand, I'm also a disabled person who generally isn't seen as being capable of anything remotely in the realm of romantic or sexual, which stretches even to things like marriage and parenting. Wow, you're a parent. Really didn't think this was gonna be a possibility for you. Thank you. So pleased that you all thought this about me. It's really not the compliment you think it is. It's a balancing act. Much like the balancing act I was talking about with my therapist, see we got back there eventually. Is Christmas a time to be selfish or selfless? Yeah, I know, Ooh, what a ramble, but we got there. Do we put our feelings aside, people please, dedicate ourselves only to making sure that others are having a good time, think only of what we can give, what we can do, what acts of service we can provide the community, or do we say no, put our feet up, indulge in goodies of the culinary and gift kind, demand time to ourselves, and you know, just actually have a holiday, or do we pretend that we're healthy, well-adjusted humans and have both? The good bits of both, not the bad bits. You don't, you don't have to have the bad bits of both. That would contradict. Oh, but speaking of wearing yourself out, so not to be that person, but if, if you've been in my channel for a while or, you know, come on, I am that person. It's fine. We know it. We're here for it. But when typing, is Christmas a time to be selfish or selfless into Google to see what came up? There are a number of articles from men's magazines talking about how important it is to just, you know, put aside your me, me, me time and actually be helpful and useful and maybe not let other people always be doing everything for you. And then from the women's magazines, it was all, oh honey, come on, you're pushing yourself too hard. You don't have to do everything. It's okay 
Take a seat, take a sit down, come on now. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to make everything by hand. It doesn't have to be 100% Instagrammable perfection every moment. Is this the real world? Or is this just media's way of perpetuating society's false narrative that men are just strategically incompetent? As a mother, all I can say, I like being able to say that now. As a mother, all I can say is, no, let's just raise feminist children who feel supported and expect good things from their romantic partners and expect to actually be supported and have a partnership. I mean, if there was ever a moment for the, oh, the straight's okay meme, I think it's now. We all know the holidays can be an emotional time, but it's really important that you're talking to someone, whether that's a friend, a family member, or a mental health professional. Just, you know, talk about what is going on in your mind. That's the important part. I talk to my wife and my therapist for BetterHelp. BetterHelp is actually the world's largest online therapy platform. It makes therapy accessible, but isn't a crisis line or self-help. It's actual professional counseling done securely online. BetterHelp is a great way to work on yourself with more than 15,000 licensed counselors in a wide range of specialties. And you can start communicating within 48 hours of being matched with a therapist. And if you're an American Sign Language user, you can be matched with a therapist who speaks ASL, which is really amazing. You can also use a chat system to communicate in writing. They actually offer a wide range of ways to communicate with a therapist, which personally I find really useful. You can call, leave video messages, journal entries, have video chats, write to each other, and more. I also really enjoy this kind of multiple choice quizzes your therapist can send you to find out more about how you're feeling, which something can really help when you're struggling to express yourself. If you're interested in trying out BetterHelp yourself, I have a special for my followers. You get 10% off your first month if you click the link in the description down below. It's also important though to let your children know that they can occasionally be selfish. I have a confession. I need to admit to some prior uh, people pleasing tendencies. Yeah, no, it's not good, it's not good, I know. So I'm attempting to overcome uh, the people pleasing and understand that it is not selfish to take care of myself. And it's something that I can wrap my head around very well-ish if it's to do with my chronic illness. I mean, I'm not incredible at it. I'm in no way am I saying I'm incredible at it. I'm not saying I can practice it, that's the thing. I'm not saying I can practice it. I'm saying I can understand it. Very different things. So yes, completely, perfectly, got it, got it down. When it comes to saying no to plans, creating boundaries that are, you know, healthy but let other people down, saying no to things not because I'm ill right now but because doing the things will make me ill in the future, it is just that little bit harder, isn't it? It's so much easier to say, oh, can't, ill today, literally can't get out of bed, than it is to say, ah, oh, I mean, I do have the energy for that, I could go to your thing, I could hang out with you, but if I do it, I mean, who the hell's gonna tidy my house afterwards because I'm not gonna be able to have the energy to do it. And it's a completely valid. Does it feel that way? No, because we as a society have decided that menial chores are somehow less important, even though they actually take up way more energy. Oh, it's like when people think about stay-at-home mothers. Is that a job? And yeah, I know I said stay-at-home mothers rather than stay-at-home parents. It's because there's a layer of sexism intertwined in this and I mean, other stay-at-home parents, there's also a whole intersection of other things that society makes them deal with. But while we're here, women's work is generally undervalued as it is. A stay-at-home mother, people generally think of housework as being easier. However, if we think about it, you can class anything as work if you would have to pay someone else to do it, right? If you can't clean your house and you need to pay a cleaner to clean it, then clearly it's a job, it's work. If you can't make your food and you need to pay someone to make your food, then clearly it's a job, it's work. And this relates whether you are working from home full time, which many of us probably are still doing, the moment that you kind of clock off from your actual job and then start doing like house chores, you're still kind of working and it's exhausting because you're also now still in your office and you don't really get to leave it. And clock off and I find that really really tiring especially since I keep mixing stuff in together it's quite hard to just be like oh 
I need to just have a break, have a sit. Actually, if I do keep going, this is gonna to go too far. And this is a problem that Claudia deals with because if she sees something, she has to do it. I can see that pile of laundry that needs to go in there. I can see that thing that needs tidying. I can see <laughs> this food that I was gonna chop up and cook. And I'm like, mm, mm, yes, but I can see that you're exhausted. So maybe we pause on that and you can return to it later. But then I have to actually force her to go into another room so she doesn't do it. Then I'll go into the other room and I'll find that she has been trimming the houseplants because she saw it. She saw another job. That's not relaxing. And I'm gonna have to find a way to gamify relaxing for her, I think. Christmas is about many, many things, but it's also a bank holiday and a time to relax. And um, I think we should all take that time. Take a chill, take a chill. This is just me talking to my wife now. She's not even in the room, but I'm like, just calm, just calm, just relax, it's fine, it's fine. Unfortunately, unlike other holidays throughout the year, Christmas brings with it an added layer of guilt created by family, culture, society, Instagram. If only it was as fast to dress a tree as Instagram makes it appear. If you struggle with your mental health, then forced family time together can be particularly difficult, especially if you deal with any trauma associated to your past. Even if it doesn't involve those people necessarily that you're sat with, just the fact that they were around at that time can be very upsetting. It can hurt to see them and it's totally fine to feel that way. Remember that your feelings are your feelings and the stress of the festive season makes things a lot worse. Even if you get along really well with your family the rest of the year. And some of us don't have a lot of family left or don't like and don't want to speak to the ones that we do have left, which again, is stressful. It's fine to be protective of yourself in situations that you feel are going to cause longer lasting harm than good. If you're going to be upset by accepting the invitation to dinner at your homophobic uncle's house, then decline if you can. However, if it's the only time you're going to be able to spend time with your grandmother this whole year, and that will upset you for longer, then that's a decision that needs to be made. And I guess you can start an argument with your the homophobic uncle over the dinner table. I mean, I'm kidding, don't do that unless you're completely in a place of safety. Feel under no obligations to, to start arguments based on um, your identity unless you feel that you are safe. If on the other hand, you have a great deal of privilege and no fear of retaliation, then absolutely go for it and, uh, and stand up for every, every marginalized group that you can. I think it's always really important that we call things out when we see them. Other people hear stuff, yeah. Call things out when you hear stuff, there we go. I've actually got a really low tolerance for this since Rupert was born. <laughs> um, anyone, even like the tiniest, the little smallest microaggression for, uh, for you know, racist, sexist, homophobic, transphobic, xenophobic, ableist, any of it. I'm just, I'm not here, I'm, I'm not here for it. Nope, absolutely not. I mean, admittedly, being deaf, it takes me slightly longer to pick it up in a group conversation, but. It just, I'm like, oh, mm, oh, mm, oh, mm. And it's not just because he's a child who has two mothers, one of whom is disabled, and as a family we celebrate our immigrant ancestors, and he visibly isn't fully Caucasian. I just wouldn't want anyone, to, like, to, And obviously the thing to do with our children in these situations isn't just to completely remove them and, and make sure they, oh, never hear things that we don't agree with. So I've started just calling them out. You know, fun when you uh, live in COVID times and only see people incredibly rarely. But there we go. And I'm uh, just also not gonna stand for that he's just a baby thing, cause don't care. I don't need him learning these things. Yes, instead I just have conversations with him about why those things aren't things that we say. And yes, I have conversations with him and he's six months old. I mean, it's not really a conversation. He, no, he generally says blah. Moving on, we've talked about emotional burnout, but there's also physical burnout. Also a lot of traveling involved in the holidays and that can lead to real setbacks with our health. I always have a little post Christmas slump with my chronic fatigue. The pandemic was so, so awful in so many ways. It also taught me some kind of good lessons. Last Christmas was the first Christmas I've not been ill my entire life. I'm granted I picked up a little smidge of agoraphobia that I'm working on getting over. I can do outside um, as long as Claudia's 
in the vague vicinity now, which is good. We went into town, ooh, and we weren't even in exactly the same area. No, I mean we were. We weren't in the same shop. She was in the shop next door. Take that agoraphobia. Huh. Another good thing of the pandemic though, is that it really helped me to realize that um, we were saying yes to far too many social things. We had an event every single weekend, events every weekend. There was always something going on that we would then have to cancel half of the time at the very, very last minute because I was too exhausted to go. My plan going forward, once the world kind of actually opens up and we really do get to start seeing our friends a little bit more, is that I'm only going to say yes to a quarter of the engagements that I did before, and then I'm actually going to show up and be my best extroverted self with all of my energy, um, because that's actually what my friends want, rather than me saying yes to things and then saying no right before I'm supposed to show up. Or, you know, falling asleep in the restaurant. <laughs> Done that one before, wouldn't advise. Holidays can be an emotional time. It's just important to make sure that you have someone to talk to, really. Whether that's a friend, a family member, or a mental health professional. And now, time for a probably minuscule bit at the end where I talk about why you should be selfless at Christmas. Because really, I think we all know that we should be selfless at Christmas. But yeah, as we know, far too often Christmas can turn to a spectacle of me, 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 me. Our earliest memories of Christmas are generally focused on presents, presents, more presents. Rather than, you know, our selfless deeds benefiting others because children are selfish. Personally, my inner child's really selfish when it comes to people. I want more, more, more people. Because the Christmases of my childhood were full of lots of aunts and cousins and always at my grandparents' house and they were really big. And, and so that for me is what Christmas is. It has to have lots of people in it. It has to be big, it has to be noisy. And if it isn't that, then it, it just isn't Christmas. So I feel like I have to, I have to have a big Christmas. And that to me is my selfish inner child thinking that and um, inflicting it on my poor wife who hates people. A bit harsh, she doesn't hate people. She can just, you know, tolerate people for a short amount of time and then it needs it to just be us, so. But she just delightfully does put up with people for me. Um, <laughs> so harsh. And so for Rupert's first Christmas, inside I'm like, people, <laughs> we've got to get all these people. I don't know where we're finding these people from, but we must find them. A pandemic, you say? This is most unfortunate. Oh, hmm. I cannot bring the people all together. So uh, I guess Rupert's second Christmas, hopefully, will be his, his big Christmas <laughs> rather than his first Christmas. But yeah, my poor wife, she really has put up with it. So I guess that's, that's a very selfless act on her part. But I do make sure, and I'm going to be really, really focused on making sure this year that there is a lot of time when it is just, I was gonna say the five of us, because you know, the dogs are our babies, um, when it's the three of us and we're doing lots of things together. I've also been thinking this year about how to make presents more selfless. And I know that there's kind of like the easy, the easy option would be like, oh, donate to charity in that person's name. And Obviously I'm not against donation to charity, but it does sort of feel like, don't hate me, um, in a way, a cop-out present. Because you made the choice, you know, and it it's a little too easy. And would you have done it if it wasn't because you had to give a present to someone? And is that present then about the person or is it about you? Because you're the one who chose to donate to charity, unless of course they ask that you donate to charity in their name, in which case obviously still do. Go ahead, don't go get someone's wishes if that's what they want. But it just feels like maybe a missed opportunity is what I mean. The act of giving a present to someone is something between the two of you. If we look at how Christmas related gift giving started, something that it ties with commemorating the Magi or the Free Wise Men who were bringing grifts as a tribute to the baby Jesus. Others think that it honors St. Nicholas who had put coins in shoes that were left out. So it's either tribute or generosity. Either way, it's still something to do with you and the person you're giving your gift to. 
And so this year I'm trying to use my gift as a way to get to know the person better find out what they really want and like, and maybe discover something about them that I didn't really know before. I want to give people things that are, are really meaningful and useful and so for instance, rather than giving a toy to a young child, maybe giving them a pass for a whole year to an adventure garden. Also I found in the past that subscriptions are a really good present because then it lasts the whole year and the person's got something to look forward to each month and it's just like a really nice way that they can develop their creativity um, enjoy something and you're just kind of firing up something in someone rather than just being like here object enjoy unless it's a book if it's a book you think they'll like don't just give them a book because you're like oh it's on the shelf <laughs> quick grab it one of my favorite parts about Christmas as a child was when we did Santa Lucia um, which is a Swedish tradition where the youngest girl in the family wears this long white robe with a red sash and a crown of candles on her head I have videos where I do this. You can click the card in the thing here. It brings, normally it's like saffron buns, I think. But we always brought one present. Um, we did it on Christmas Eve in our family and I, it was always me because I'm the youngest cousin girl. The youngest female cousin. Um, and I would bring a present around to everyone in the family. They each got one present to open on Christmas Eve. It was a really nice thing to do with the presents, to have something that we would open separately to everything else and that present I think always meant like that little bit more um, because it wasn't opened in the rush of everything else and you're like oh yeah well so I think this year I'm going to try and do something like that where we slowly open presents rather than doing a big everyone open present I'm gonna convince everyone that we're gonna slowly open presents and therefore give presents less meaning because you know once you've opened them and then you're like oh the sadness ah oh. because you spend all month thinking oh what presents what should i get this person and then you wrap them and they're so pretty and then they sit there and then they get opened and then it's like oh well that's done but wouldn't it be nice if instead you just like open them little bit by little bit in the same way slowly wrap them slowly unwrap them i don't know i'm using the plot now aren't i it's not even late my god why does 7.30 feel so late now? <laughs> In conclusion, Christmas. Daunting. Doesn't have to be daunting. Can just be another month. But it can be a month where we learn to take good care of ourselves and others and the planet and the people we haven't even met yet. Let me know your traditions in the comments down below and we can share some stories. I want to know when other people open their presents. I don't, this has really got stuck in my mind now. Thank you so much for watching this Christmas video. Thank you so much for BetterHelp for sponsoring it. If you'd like 10% off your first month of BetterHelp, you can click the link in the description down below. Let me know your Christmas traditions. I'm intrigued to know all about it. Um, my Christmas videos will be continuing. I'm going to do two a week is the aim. The next video will be a vlog of our trip to Bath, which is for Claudia's birthday because it was her birthday on yesterday. Yesterday, when this comes up. It was her birthday yesterday, so you can say happy birthday to her in the comments as well. I'll see you next time. Mwah, mwah, mwah.